Oh, hi, and what's this? No. Welcome to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I'm your host and community developer for Rocksmith, Doug Lilly, and I return. Uh, I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, the exercises uh, from Rocksmith Advanced Exercises Volume 2, and we're going to have some songs to put those in context. We're going to give away prizes, and we're going to talk about music for a bit. It's going to be fun, and uh, I hope you'll like it. Uh, right now we're going to look at a trailer for uh, this exercise pack. Once more, this is Rocksmith Advanced Exercises Volume 2. And we'll be back with our first guests and songs right after that. Did I mention these were advanced? They are. Speaking of advanced, uh, I'd like to welcome our first couple of guests. Hello, Greg Studley and Andrew Levin. Oh, hey, Doug. Hello. Uh. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> Doug. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, good. good. How you good, been? Good. I'm, doing, I'm doing very well. Awesome. Um, I, I'm back, and I, I got some sun and then immediately lost it, <laughs> <laughs> such is life. Uh, so this week, we are looking at uh, advanced exercises. And indeed, they are. They are. I don't know if you saw that trailer that we were just watching. I, I, know. I, I yeah, glanced. You did. Uh, pretty fast. Pretty yeah, fast. Oh, yeah. Th th I think we, we talked about this a little last week. Which is I wasn't here. <laughs> well, you obviously weren't watching the stream then, were you? No, I was on vacation. Shame. Anyway. Uh, no, fine. these are definitely like a, a big step up from the last advance pack, purposely, because yeah. we had uh, eighth note triplets as being mm -hmm. the kind of note density we were dealing right. with. And now we've got 16th notes, so, uh, I mean, if, if you could play the, the last one, awesome. And you should really try and play this one, because it's going to push. <laughs> it's going to push you. Okay, cool. Um, uh, before we get into uh, the first of the exercises, I want to remind everybody uh, that watching your chat, uh, to be helpful, uh, is Brian Turner. That is UB Jurassic. Uh, he'll be taking questions from you throughout the stream. So if you have any questions for us uh, here in San Francisco, please reach out to UB Jurassic. Let him know, and he'll get those questions to us. He's also who will be handling the raffles later on in the stream. Not right now, but later. So uh, the first exercise we're going to take a look at uh, is linear playing. I think we should say hi to Andrew first. 
I no. Well, I hi Andrew. <laughs> hey. I said, okay, I, I feel better now. I said hi to Andrew. I, I just I didn't, let him say I didn't, anything back. I didn't. Get and then I dropped my say hi to him. Though he's sitting right next to me. That's why I got two. I was wondering um, what you could do about yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> hello, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey, what's hey. up? Um, you know, just working. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's a good thing we said hello to Andrew. Uh, so first, uh, we're going to start with linear play. Uh, and again, uh, these all of the exercises uh, get progressively faster. The 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 BPM rises. Uh, phrase by phrase, or is it every other phrase? Because you've got one des one ascending, one descending. Uh, every other phrase. Every other so, phrase. So every every time up. you start back on your low string, <coughs> uh, be it for guitar or for bass, on your low E, every time you return to your low E to start the exercise over, uh, you'll have a speed increase. Okay. All right. Uh, when, when we're going to start on phrase three. Uh, we're not going to go too far, maybe a phrase or two, just to give uh, the folks at home an idea of uh, what these exercises hold. So here is linear playing. Uh, both of you playing bass for now, mm -hmm. Indeed. so we don't break the UI. <laughs> and now, without a pick. If you're a bass player, by the way, some of you are. Yep. Uh, you should definitely try doing these both with Wait. and without a pick. Sure. I, I could All say right. the same if you're a guitarist, but. You, know. you think that's a good, good look at linear playing? I think we should ask Andrew. What do you think, Andrew? Um. Yeah. Do both. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew, what was the question? Um, play with a pick. He did. He did technically answer a question that was asked recently. <laughs> that is true. He just did yeah. a little out of order. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's linear playing. So I see there's there's a bit more uh, of a change in the pattern. There is. So so first, what you're doing is practicing repeated notes on a string, and, and actually repeated also uh, frets. Yes. So you're doing that, and then what you're doing is going into kind of a more a, even a more advanced linear thing than that, which is playing sixteenth notes across that string with your fingers changing right. as you're playing. And so both techniques are actually really useful because sometimes you're going to sit in a spot and play some repeated notes, yep. and sometimes you're going to have to move on every sixteenth. So so both of these are applicable to a lot of tunes. Um, and I, I think it's it's probably good to say. Uh, if you're not playing with your pinky, you should be playing with your pinky, and this will be a good way. These exercises, I think, are a good way to have you focus on just keeping your hand anchored and using all four fingers. Yes, uh, and and I do want to point out that if any of these exercises do seem to be a bit difficult, like if maybe you're going from an intermediate pack and you and you pick this up, and even at the early stages you're finding that, hey, this is this just a complicated finger pattern. Yeah. Um, Lower the difficulty because we purposely built these in a way where if you lower the difficulty and you use uh, the difficulty levels to kind of teach you what's going on, it's built in a way where you can learn the pattern very efficiently yeah. uh, without kind of straining over 16 different notes in a bar. Uh, use so you get the, 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 the essence of the pattern. Oh, yeah. Le yeah. Level it up bit by bit and you will learn the pattern that All way. Right. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's take a look at uh, the next exercise. This is string switching. Again, on bass from this phrase harder. This is a tough one. Actually, one that I find a lot harder uh, without the pick. Yeah. Like the la the linear one is kind of like yeah, it's you know 50-50 either way. But when when you go to moving strings back and forth without a pick, there's a lot more technique that's involved in doing. Some of which I don't have down. Let's just be honest. That that feel good. That feels yeah. good to me. Yeah, I feel right. better with the pick. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab the right. pick, too. Uh, you're going to grab a pick? Well, do you want to hand him the pick? We're going to... Uh, no, no, I got I got. Oh, you I got, got one? I think good? it's time. Well, I brought, I brought what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a guitar then. Okay. That sounds good. Oh, uh, I did it again. What did you I do? do? Oops, like you did it again. Every time. What did you... But look. Look at that. See? Efficiency. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, Doug doesn't so even know what I'm talking about. I have about no idea. Here. I missed something uh, vital. It, it wasn't really that, that important, let's be honest. Uh, so the song uh, that we're going to use uh, to, to demonstrate uh, these techniques um, in play, specifically on bass, uh, is Maxwell Murder yeah. by Rancid. One of the few songs with uh, what I would call like a, a legitimate like bass solo. Yeah, or at least library. like a shreddy bass solo. Yeah. A lot yeah. of bass like solos are more tasty, you know. Yeah, 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 or like a groove. Like this one, this one definitely has like a shining moment. Yeah. Uh, so, it's a yeah, decent w- sized moment too. <laughs> was there? Yeah, was, there <laughs> <laughs> was there? Uh, was there anything in particular that drew you to this one? Because you were, you yeah. were w- one of the first ones to like snatch up one of these songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I first started working for Rocksmith. Uh, I the very f- I, one of the first songs I pulled up was Maxwell Murder, and I had never really read the interface before, and I was just like, "Oh, I can't play this. This is just <laughs> n- no way, no way." And when you said that um, you wanted because it's the advanced exercises to yep. do a challenging song, um, I thought, "Well, I'll challenge myself and see if I can play what I couldn't play when I started here." Th- and that's and a, that's a great idea, like in general. If you yeah. if you feel like you've plateaued, go back to a song that you haven't played in a while. Totally, and and, yeah. and kind of see. Like w- one thing that I'll do is I'll I'll look to see like what I'm at like ninety percent of and see like I can get I can get I can do it more than ninety mm-hmm. right now. Always, always shoot a little higher, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so here is Maxwell Murder by Rancid uh, with a lot of linear playing <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, some string switching in there as well. Uh, and again, if you have questions, make sure you reach out to UB Jurassic in the chat. Here we go, moment of truth. <laughs> you got this. You got this. It's going to request that you only slap. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wouldn't be very linear, would it? That was a team jam. <laughs> oh my god! So how does it feel? How does it feel to conquer? Uh, the well, song? I still got three more percent to okay. con- before I can conquer it. <laughs> okay, um, okay. I'll, 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 uh, um, you got yeah, two point two percent. Two point two. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think, I'll the, take I think it. the best part about that is your score is higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, ninety eight point eight. I think oh, I just yeah, got. Yeah, I'll I take that. that. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah no, I was just okay. distracted by everything you were. Doing. I was like, wow. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that, that song awesome. is a sprint, not a marathon. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you right, know, it's a right. minute and a half. And that, that was another reason that I picked it is it's really tough. It's advanced, but it wasn't like eight minutes long, so I could learn you, it. You get, <laughs> yeah, you, you learn, okay, I got it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got two parts, and then you're, you're, you're set. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a couple questions for you, uh, well, for us. Uh, first one from Francois Wong, SF, okay. uh, who's downstairs right now. Yeah. Uh, wants to know more about the bass that you're playing, Andrew, because uh, he doesn't think we've seen that one on stream. I thought we had, but just in case, it's probably been a while. Yeah. And uh, it's an interesting bass. It's a fun bass. It's a loud bass. <laughs> yeah, so you guys could hear me practicing earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And I'm also <laughs> a loud player. Uh, also um, true. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's an Epiphone uh, semi hollow. It's pretty cool. It's got a got a unique sound to it. Um, I think it sounds really cool for Motown and that kind of thing. Like, so, uh, th- so that's why you picked it for the for the punk song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the, a lot of the punk guys have that like retro no, kind of no. thing going I get on. It. You know I what get, I mean? I one hundred percent get it. Yeah. yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, this bass particularly sounds good for any like James Jamerson bass lines, any of the Jackson Five yeah. stuff. Um, 
Sounds really good for that. Beatles stuff. Paul McCartney played super a semi punchy. hollow. Yeah, super punchy. Yeah. Um, I really like this bass quite a lot. Um, I need to change the strings on it, though, because this has been the bass that's been at my desk uh, since I started here. So I've played yeah. it a lot, and I haven't changed the strings. So. Well, that se- it seems like it's being responsible to change the strings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Uh, well, yeah, there was one more question uh, for me, actually, from uh, Beardy. Uh, wants to know why I haven't shared my Disneyland photos. Uh, I, haven't even sh- <laughs> I haven't shared them with my mom yet. So th- I guess I'll need to send them to her first. She likes to see pictures. I don't usually photograph. Do you put your Disneyland photos on the chat? In no. Here, like I no, don't no, 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 you no. Do that. No, I'm <laughs> not, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to actually share those photos <laughs> uh, with anyone except my mom. That's the only person <laughs> that gets to see them. Uh, that's weird. That, that, was, that got really weird. Anyway, I think it's time for a break now. Uh, <laughs> we, now that I've uh, creeped out our guests, uh, we're going to have our first Ernie Ball prize pack giveaway. So uh, please listen to what UB Jurassic is saying in the chat. Uh, and I would like to again thank you. Uh, thanks, Andrew Levin, for stopping by. Uh, so this Ernie Ball prize pack, if you are a winner, uh, this is what you'll receive. You'll get two sets of strings, one six-string set for your guitar, one four-string set for your bass. I mean, you could sw- swatch them around if you want. I'm not going to tell you what guitar you have to put them on, but I think it's advised that you put the six-string set on a six-string guitar and a four-string on a four-string bass. You know, it makes sense. That's what they were designed for. But again, no hard rules for that. Uh, You're going to get a dozen picks from Ernie Ball. Uh, You're going to get three picks from us, the Spectrum Plectrum. You're going to get a red Ernie Ball guitar strap, uh, and you are going to get a package of Ernie Ball Warner Wipes to keep your guitar polished, clean, to keep your strings, uh, fretboard, and body nice and clean. And, uh, and, and and lasting longer. Um, <clears throat> you're also going to get a peg winder from Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball has been uh, extremely generous to us. We want to thank them for their continued support of this Rocksmith developer stream. Uh, so yeah, please listen to what Yubi Jurassic is saying in the chat. Uh, he will give you your instructions. And if you are the winner, uh, he will reach out to you via Whisper. He will get from you your name, your shipping address, and your telephone number. We do need all of that information. Uh, in order to get your package to you, uh, and if it's uh, if if we forget a piece, uh, that means Brian will probably have to reach out a little bit later to get that uh, information from you, uh, so that we can you know get your prize to you. So good luck on that. And uh, right now, I think we are able to say hello to our next guest, along with Greg Stubby, who's still here. Hello. <sighs> hello. It's, it's back. And Jason Kokel. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? To you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, o- I'm always here. Except when I'm <laughs> yeah, not. yeah, you never leave. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> um, how have you been? Pretty good. Good. That's my good. go-to. Yeah, yeah pretty good. <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> um, so you are joining us for this uh, these advanced exercises. Yes. Uh, and I think I, I just got you which exercise you'll be working on uh, minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> <So> <laughs> <we'll> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, did you d- have you had a chance to, to go through it at all? To take no, a look sir, at I it? have not. All right, well, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, so you are going to look at the hammer-ons yeah. exercise, which does include uh, pull-offs as well, but it yes. starts, it, it's initiated with the hammer-on. Yeah, which so I think is the back key and forth indicator. sequence, yes. yes. Um, anything you want to say about this before we take a look at it? Uh, I, I would just say for the for the people again who who might think that this is kind of an, an excessive amount of hammer on pull off sequence that uh, for more than what they're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, again, just lower the difficulty down, and it's taught in a sequential manner. The way that we decided to build the each one of these is actually built a little different, so that they're most easily learnable. So okay. uh, if it's if it's a bit much and you're having trouble actually getting the finger patterns down. Lower the difficulty in riff repeater, and go ahead and see if you can, you know, one by one get where all of these uh, fingers are supposed to be planted, and it will fall into place. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, this is hammer-ons, uh, starting at phrase five. Sight read. <laughs> Thank you. Do one more time through. That's 
what it's all about. All right, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, the song that we're going to use has some hammer-ons and pull-offs. Yeah, some in, in, yeah, in the solo. Yeah, it is, it is not the most uh, hammer-on, pull-off uh, heavy song. But, no, but it is one of the most heavy songs. Right, right, right. In it, the world. It, uh, <laughs> fami- what? Uh, famously won an award um, that I'm not going to talk about because it makes some people have feelings. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> <so, laughs> well, that I was an re- awkward. I yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, you about uh, it so afterwards so I can get the... I, I, need, to, I need to know this now. That, uh, that week off, um, I am, I've, I've forgotten that uh, there's information that I have uh, that when I talk about and I haven't shared the information with the rest, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So Aqualung by Jethro Tull <laughs> yes. is what we're talking about, uh, which did, uh, was it this song in particular? Or was it the album that won an award that it was uh, divisive po- that we don't, some people don't like talking about? Like Dan? Possibly the, the whole album. Um, okay. I mean, I, I would say so. Okay. It's, it's great. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you said heavy and that's exactly as I would, I would describe this. This was like, <clears throat> just at the beginnings of heavy metal. Right. And, I mean, like this this whole riff, you could just put massive amounts of distortion on it and play it palm muted, and it, you can put it up against any you know anything of, uh, today. And it's and it's it's heavy. It's heavy and evil. It's really good. <laughs> maybe yeah, really after good. after after you play through, maybe we can hear what that sounds like. Yeah. You can sort of sort of dirty it up a bit. Ex- yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe. yeah. 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 Let's, let's All right. Uh, so here is Aqualung by Jethro Tull oh, with Greg Studley like and Jason Kokel. If you have questions. You be dressed. A little harmony between the guitar and the bass there. Right here. Yeah. Feeling like the dead duck. Spitting out pieces of his broken love. Thank you. 
So, <laughs> so a little bit of uh, 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 volume. Uh, uh, clipping issues? Yeah, probably. That d uh, that's why. Pretty hot. Please, must, you must calibrate. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. do, do as we say. Um, yeah, uh, so that riff. Let's talk about that. Oh, more. yeah. Yeah. Well, the, 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 uh, the, the riff aside, like even that, that, that just the single note part by itself is, is evil, but also the, the chords, the, the, f the power chords are producing their own melody and every, it's just, it's super angular and neat and, and, um, and it just is constantly evolving. The thing the, that this, the, the trick with this song is that the electric guitar is like, uh, the standard tune electric guitar is only in a couple of parts yeah. and pretty much almost the rest of the song is a third fret capo acoustic or a third fret capo electric so the entire arrangement had to be adapted to be playable oh, wow. so that you didn't have to like just sit there for like two minutes like all right because <laughs> i'm not doing anything for a long time so you know track it's, you know track yeah i know track okay. this song so what what it so uh, the way that those chords are played they're really standard open chord shapes when when it when it's capoed okay. and so it makes it a lot easier to do things like you know, these little hammer on and pull off -y things, but when you're barring the whole thing, it, it's almost impossible. Like if you're, if you're doing, if you're doing like any of those D, the, the, those D chord shapes, but with this, there's no way to do it. I mean, it's just super <laughs> awkward and weird and almost impossible. So we had to adapt it. And therefore, so when it's doing the, that is when it, that's, it has, a, when you have a third fret capo, that's an F chord where normally it, without a capo, you know, it's a D chord shape. When we're doing it, F, it's a little bit clunkier, but it's possible. Like, so those notes are actually an octave lower than the recording. Oh, so okay. if you're listening to, you're like, I'm playing it, but it might not sound exactly. Or well, that's why it's like okay. all, it all had to be adapted to, so that it's at least playable. So traditionally, know. when they would play that live, would that be be played by two different? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty artists. sure. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, they, there's I, I, the singer's always. Pl I think he's playing the acoustic guitar. Uh, yeah. It's capoed, and then there, you know, the, the other guy's just doing all the all the standard tune lead stuff. And, um, while, and while that guy's playing, he can just run around and. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like and you know, uh, yeah. jump on set pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, do, do some medieval tune type of flutes. things. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's mostly about the Amisher. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is. Yeah. I mean. This <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This song is just. I mean, it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's. 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 It's an. It's an epic. In. You know. In one. Form. One thing that I. I kind of noticed listening that time that I don't know that I've noticed before is how uh, that that riff does sort of like take turns, harmonizing or doubling up with other players. Like you've got. Sometimes yes. with the bass is playing along. So a lot of times, you know, the the, the, mm -hmm. the vocals are mirroring with the guitars. But I noticed like the piano in that last time through, and it was like really stark and added like a totally different tonal, uh, uh, different tone. Yeah, yeah, and some yeah, and and, um, and then there's there's parts that are like harmonized between one guitar and bass, and then a third guitar comes in, and it's all right. of a sudden, <laughs> and you, like, you hear it, and the way it's panned, it's neat, like you can hear it in the headphones, all of a sudden it's like, oh, there it is, it's just kind of, you know, it's sitting out there, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of parts going on in this song, and we, we managed to do it, I think I think there's two leads and a rhythm, I think. That sounds about right. Or maybe two rhythm, uh, two rhythms and a lead, I can't remember, but there's what, like, there's the capo version, which you can play, if you have a capo, you can play the rhythm part, and you know, it'll it'll be a lot easier than, to, <laughs> than doing all the adapted chords. That's so just sure. do you, do you recall? I don't know if you've looked at the capoed part in a in a while, but uh, when you play the capoed rhythm part, uh, are you you're not doing the uh, like the, the the electric riff, right? I I can't remember. I mean, it's possible to do because if that's capoed, you can go. I mean, all those they're all it's in the same thing, but it's just the 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 lead part actually does slide down to the first fret okay. here and. So I don't think, but I don't think that guitar actually plays that part. I think it, I think it just plays the chords where it's just like. You know, it's do, and yeah. that's actually the part. So, so in with the capo on, there, it, you, you're just, it, you're doing exactly that. There's nothing. There's there's it's not going to interrupt, and that, but then you'll just have an easier time playing the. That, that sort of like subdued, uh, you know, parts later. So uh, before you played the song, uh, you were talking about how it's a, it, it can be a very sort of evil, very like sinister riff. Uh, let's let's see you sinister it up as much as you can with an on the spot. Oh yeah, with with yeah. with with a little bit <laughs> yeah. more modern distortion. Yeah, yeah. 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 
something like that. But it totally works. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. But I mean, you know, the, 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 I, I think they were ahead of their time with that. That was, you know, no one really wrote anything like that. And then, yeah. all, then there's piano doubling it too. Right, just, right, right. Just great. And the you song, uh, as recorded, does not have a flute. It do, this song, this song does not have. Yeah, right. but uh, there are plenty <laughs> other Jethro. I grew up on Jethro Tull. There's tons. Of, yeah, tons oh, yeah, of I mean, flute I'm all saying, over the place. I'm not saying yeah. Jethro Tull didn't use yeah. flute. Yeah, just this song, this recording, live, I think, uh, might have used a flute on occasion. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, not in this recording. No. All right. Well, thank you very thank much you. for joining us uh, right now. What are we doing? Uh, oh, yeah. We're going to take a little uh, a brief video break. We're going to take a look at a uh, behind the scenes video of the making of the first Boxsmith song pack. Now, while that's going on, uh, we're going to give away five copies of this week's Advanced Exercises Volume 2 pack. Uh, Yubi Jurassic is going to take care of that. So make sure you look for his instructions in the chat. And we'll be back with uh, more music after that. We've been kicking around the idea of doing a classical music DLC for a while. I think even back in Rocksmith 1, but there was never the right time or the format or, or just a plan in place. We tempo mapped a Bach invention about two years ago, and there was never an appropriate time. We just kind of got going with Rocksmith 2014, but the idea stuck around and people kept wanting to do it first time we've really owned the entire process and it's very exciting. I'm really juiced about the rehearsal. We've been spending so long honing the arrangements and getting the parts and the scores ready and communicating with the performers and the magic of putting it all together hasn't happened and we have an idea of what it's gonna sound like but it's all been kind of MIDI up to this point and to hear the humans and the real guitars and the magic of the moment happen uh, we're, I'm excited we're bringing back some of the guys who really stood out and helped us develop Rocksmith 2014 one of the guys was knee deep in session mode and two of them are actually former note trackers, one for DLC and one helped us actually with the 2014 disc. We brought these guys back because they are tremendously talented and we wanted an opportunity to work with them again. There is a lot of talent on the Rocksmith team. We got the note trackers to arrange it. I gave them free reign. I tried to cater each chart to like a certain arranger's style that I knew they would be successful in. I feel like for both the crescendos and the day crescendos, crescendo died away immediately and then just sat, as opposed to a constant thing. And then for the crescendo, it was like, oh, we're going to crescendo now, and we're going to stay here, and then we're going to just move like that. Okay. Try to reserve it, make it a little bit more of a linear uh, uh, okay. yeah. Let's just start. And then, um, after a day of working on arrangements, I checked in with them and saw the direction it was going. And if it was too far one way, I'd steer it, or, or I'd say, "Oh, that's great. We'll just keep going." Side of the beat for sure. Don't push it. One, two, three, four. 
part of being a great musician is knowing lots of different types of music and being able to play in lots of different styles. And hopefully we've covered a lot of different ground with this DLC pack stylistically. The triplet thing, can you actually not make the triplets short? I think it'll be easier to play them as triplets if they're long. Boom. Okay. at piano. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'd say keep the whole thing at keep piano. Keep the whole thing at piano, Joseph? Yeah. All right. Uh, way better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way, 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 way better. Yeah. That whole thing just needs to stay piano. Better. Classical music and, and rock music are seemingly disparate things, but hopefully through the arrangements and through the note tracks, you'll gain a lot of new skills. And welcome back to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, this this is what we do. This is what we do every week. We take a look at this week's DLC. Uh, on exercise weeks, uh, we've taken a slightly different approach where we will only play a little bit of the exercises and then uh, use a song to demonstrate how those exercises fit within them. Uh, we have all the other uh, usual pieces of the stream, though, where we, we talk about the music and we have giveaways. We just gave away five copies or maybe are right now still giving away five copies of this week's exercise pack, the Advanced Exercises Volume 2. Uh, and to play the final couple of uh, phrases from those uh, and the song that incorporates them, uh, we would like to introduce Anthony Martinez. Hello. Anthony Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, stop it. Thank you. Yes, You're welcome. Stop. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I'll give you praise if I want. Um, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, Good. it's Good. nice to be back. I feel like it's been a while. I think it's only been a couple of weeks. But yeah, it, 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 I think it, it always like, feels yeah. like it's been a while. It does. Except yeah. for Greg, who's pretty much... <laughs> He's, he's, he's so tired. He's playing he's all so the tired songs. right now. Yeah. Um, so That's you, all good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you also uh, just realized that you'd be playing a couple of the exercises. Yes. Uh, you're not the only one. I think um, yeah. at least one of the other players sort of just realized that uh, we had to do some exercises along yeah. with these. So have you? did you have a chance to take a look at the exercises that you'll be working on? Oh, I took a look. Yeah, I think it's still <laughs> going to feel like a sight reading exercise. Okay, we but can, I, we, it'll we be can, fun. We can claim it's a sight read. Nice. I mean, everybody already knows otherwise, <laughs> but we can, we can stick by it. <laughs> we can just say it. Okay. Be fun. Okay, so uh, to sight read, first yes. off, you're going to sight read uh, the pull-offs uh -huh. exercise. Uh, we're starting at phrase nine, which is towards the very end. Uh, so 50% the maximum speed? Fit, no, we're doing full speed. Mm. Oh, okay. So, yep. Uh, so these go up to 120 BPM. Uh, so starting at uh, this phrase, phrase nine, what are we at? Like 90, 100? So ma maybe it's good to put like... This in perspective of what sure. what 120 BPM is sure. for let's, let's for this exercise. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, 120 beats per minute right. means you have two beats every second. Yes. Okay. Two beats every second, and we're fitting four notes inside every beat. Yep. So you're going to end up playing eight notes every second. Eight notes a second mm -hmm. by the end. By the end of it. By the end. So what we're starting with at phrase nine, uh, not quite that many, like eight beats every second and a quarter, <laughs> roughly. I'm not going to do the math wow, right now. Wow, that was precise. Yeah. Well, you know. 
Keep the change. Keep, <laughs> keep the change, <laughs> Dudley. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this is pull-offs, uh, which again does include some hammer-ons. Mm -hmm. But we're leading. <laughs> I should shut up. <laughs> Pretty quickly. Yep, it does that. Starting from the beginning is definitely the easier method. <laughs> Starting at the end. So we're one hundred and eight. You ready? Ready to speed up? <laughs> Don't forget to use your pinky. Last one. This one really does fatigue the hand, though. All right. Great, Woo. great job. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a really good sight read. You're ready. Right are, are, are you? You look like you're scared that there's more ending coming. on uh, kind of, but also ending on G major. I don't know. Just Way to resolve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What key? What key are these in? The Chromatic. We're in the, the key, key of life. Key of life. The key. Oh, nice. The key of making you not have to think about these techniques when you play them. It, it's called twelve tone music. <laughs> twelve tones. It's, it's more of a modern approach. Sure. Tell me more. It's <laughs> about all I know at okay. this point. All right. Uh, well, uh, something that you you do know about string skipping. This one was brutal, <laughs> by the way. This, yeah, this, it okay, is. Yeah, okay, <laughs> the, yeah, the, okay. It's, it's good you we say this one for last. No let's just, let's just be honest. This one sure. is brutally difficult. Yeah. Okay. And like, even to record it, I was like scratching my head. Like, why did why did I write this one? Like, I probably could have sure. come up with something easier. But again, if we're gonna go advanced, but yeah. Um, if if there is one exercise in this pack that's gonna push your limits, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be this one. Well, I can't wait. Uh, so this is again <laughs> starting at phrase nine. Dear God, uh, this us. is uh, string skipping from Rocksmith Advanced Exercises, oh, man. Volume Two. Oh, forgive me, Father. Good luck. <laughs> ah, there we it's go. Twice as fast. It's actually okay at this speed. Like it's not brutal yet. It's when it hits the 120 that it really just. I had to let go of the other pattern. <laughs> Hey, Mom, look what I can do. Thank you. you. I really should. I should have done that. I should have thrown that in there. Re resolve something. <laughs> That's a nice chord at the end. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> and breathe. It's it's the the final exhale <sighs> of the exercise. All right. Um, done that. Uh, Jean 308 <laughs> asks. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Anthony's Les Paul is a plus top pro, right? That's correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well I done. love this guitar. So we will not correct you. Because you're not <laughs> wrong. Uh, so uh, the song that we decided to use uh, for to demonstrate the string skipping and pull-offs, uh, "Flyleaf's All Around Me." Yeah. Uh, which I think this was this was just this is one that I found and it seemed to to hit all the marks that I needed uh, as far as these techniques. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a fun song and the rhythm and lead are pretty distinct mm -hmm. throughout. So I, I thought it would be. Uh, a nice way to, to show off some of the rhythm playing as well. Yeah, I think it's a great choice. Uh, we do need yeah. to, oh, have you already have to, we have to retune, to retune down to, this is in drop mm -hmm. D. Um, so I think we're going to, are we going to the actual tuner? Or are we going to skip the tuner and we'll figure it out. They're, they're I'm not sure, they're apparently we're calibrating now. again first. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> calibration, as you mentioned, very important. 
especially when you switch guitars. Switch guitars oh, yeah. or, or retuning. If you're retuning drastically, vital. Switching guitars, switching vital. instruments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for sure. Maybe even like if you're if you're going from uh, uh, pick to finger style, or if you're switching pickups on your Could instrument, because you'll find yeah. that some of your pickups will have hotter output than others. Uh, so uh, even switching pickups, I mean, I I would advise kind of finding the pickup that works best with the game. But uh, if for a particular song you want to swap it over, like it, for acoustic songs, I actually normally prefer using um, my neck pickup. Yeah. Rather than the bridge pickup. Um, and so if you're going to do that kind of thing, it's also good to calibrate in that instance. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Um, let's see. While you guys are wrapping up tuning, uh, I just want to mention the, the three songs that we're using in uh, this week's stream. Uh, this one, Flyleaf All Around Me, was in the female lead song pack, along with Hailstorms, Love Bites, and So Do I, and Hearts Crazy on You. Uh, Jethro Toll Aqualung was in the 70s mix song pack three with We're an American Band and Radar Love. And finally, uh, Rancid's Maxwell Murder was in the Rancid song pack appropriately enough. Uh, so all those available uh, as DLC if you're if you're mm -hmm. looking for uh, some, some songs to sort of work on these techniques uh, in correlation with the exercises or just whatever you want to play. If you just heard them for the first time here and you're like, that sounds fun, I want to play it, mm -hmm. you can. It's, it's out there. I expected some. <laughs> that, that I think the so silence was better. Okay, <laughs> silence is good. Okay, uh, well, here is uh, Flyleaf all around me. Uh, again, if you have any last-minute questions, reach out to UB Jurassic in the chat.
And I uh, forgot to mention that before you were playing. Uh, but Greg, you were playing. You were on the top there, playing <coughs> the rhythm pad. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did surprisingly well, Uh-oh. considering you didn't know which side you were looking at. Sounds good. And uh, lead Anthony, you were playing lead on the, mm-hmm. the bottom, bottom of the screen there. On the bottom. All right. That's, that's also. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. <coughs> Some 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 of the techniques that we talked about in there. Mm-hmm. Some nice. Uh, somebody mentioned the the interplay between the two guitar parts. In that, do you did you note track this one? This was before your time, Greg. It was before my time. Yeah, yeah. I, th- yeah. I thought you were asking him. Oh, oh yeah, I was um, asking him. Yeah, I'll have to look. I just, and see <laughs> who, I just wanted to remind I'll you. I have to look and see who note tracked it. But yeah. um, one of the things I was going to comment on was the interplay. Each guitar part sort of gets its moment, and then they come together and create. Really nice textures, yeah. and um, th- I mean the song, the guitar parts are also effects driven. Uh, there's there's a lot of space to play with, yeah. a lot of single note lines that that fill in the blanks with that delay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's really well written and a lot of fun to play. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of string skips, um, a lot of jumping back and forth, playing uh, chord partials, single note patterns. Uh, the hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of everything. Cool. Uh, well, thank you very much. Oh, and uh, I, m- I mentioned earlier that this was part of the uh, female lead song pack. There is also mm-hmm. a Flyleaf song pack yeah. with three other songs that I did not write down. Uh, so uh, Toy, who's in the chat, will probably sh- link those uh, by the time I'm done with this very slow and paced out sentence. I'm giving you some time. <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so right now, I think uh, we're going to do uh, another brief break. We're going to have Great. our final giveaway of the stream, and then we'll come back, and uh, Greg and I will we'll talk about these exercises a little bit more, and uh, we'll talk about what's, uh, what's on the way. So uh, cool. right now, uh, again, thank you, Anthony Martinez, for oh, joining course. us and thank playing you. that fly leaf. Uh, right now, we're going to give away our final uh, of this week's stream, uh, Ernie Ball Prize Pack. So please listen to UB Jurassic in the chat for instructions on how you can win uh, I know a couple of the reas- uh, a couple of the rules about winning these packs. One, uh, you do have to be following the channel. You have to follow Rocksmith Game on Twitch. Uh, secondarily, uh, you'll type in exclamation raffle once UB Jurassic has opened up the raffle, which is probably already done. It's probably it's, it's, he's pretty he's pretty on the on the job with that. Uh, so if you win, you're going to get everything that you see on your screen. Uh, all of those uh, the, the six string set, four string set of strings from Ernie Ball. You're going to get a dozen. Picks from any ball, you're going to get three Spectrum Plectrum picks from us here at Rocksmith. Uh, you're going to get a red guitar strap, which you could use for your guitar or bass, possibly a mandolin, maybe. It might be a bit bit long, but I, I, I don't know why. You could probably make it work if you really wanted to. Uh, also, you're going to get a, uh, a package of Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes to keep your guitar's strings, fretboard, and body polished, cleaned, and uh, freshened up. Uh, you're also going to get a peg winder from Ernie Ball to uh, get your strings on your guitar as quickly as possible. If you win, you're going to get a whisper from UB Jurassic that once more is Brian Turner, uh, the community manager of Rocksmith, uh, located out in North Carolina. Uh, he will reach out to you and get your full name, your shipping address, and your phone number. Uh, so please make sure you keep an eye out for that whisper if you win. Right now, uh, like I said, uh, we were going to talk a little bit more about these exercise packs. Uh, so, Greg, uh, ultimately, uh, well, I think one thing that we haven't mentioned. So, uh, as of right now, uh, volume two uh, is sort of what we have planned for the exercise packs. Yes. There's not necessarily another uh, uh, exercise. There's not a third volume that's like scheduled. No, not not um, at this point. So we've 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 put out we, we we had the request for some some exercises some some drills uh, and we've we've put these out. So now we're gonna see uh, how they how they play. Yeah, um, and we we definitely love you know your your feedback on it. If if you find that these are uh, helping you and you find that you're becoming a better player or uh, a- another thing I find these are useful for is if you're picking up a different instrument like if you're mostly a yeah. uh, guitar player but you want to get better at playing bass then maybe these can help you with that as well so and any of these stories that you find if, if this is really working to your advantage uh, we'd love to hear about it yeah. and if you want to post a video telling us about it and share it with us we would actually love to see that and you can uh, text uh, the, the so all of our social media pages are uh, directly beneath uh, they're on the podium here, right there on the floor. This way, yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, so reach out to us there uh, on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Rocksmith Game on Facebook. It's just Facebook.com/slash Rocksmith. We also have our forums. If you go to Rocksmith.com, uh, there's a link at the top of that page to get to our forums. Uh, so with with these exercise packs, these uh, these two volumes 
out in the wild. Now, uh, what are you sort of hoping, ultimately, what's your, what's your main goal in putting these together? I'm hoping that we, that we could have answered the call, which is, okay. which is that we were hearing, I think since before I even started working here, mm -hmm. that uh, we wanted some more exercise material that wasn't necessarily song-based. Something a bit guided and... and Right, some tutorials focus. on how to play certain techniques and things like that. So I, I'm, I'm just hoping that we have given everyone that aspect of the playing that they were looking for, because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of sources to find that information, and I'm hoping that, that this can be people's source for learning how to do specific techniques on their instrument. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, and there were a couple other questions that we've seen around. Um, so people have asked why these exercises uh, were divided into separate packs rather than one and just slowed down with Riff Repeater. Because that would be one big pack. Uh, oh, no, yeah. that's, not, that's not the reason. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the truth is, um, these were composed in a very specific way in that be uh, beginning players who are unfamiliar with the instrument or those who haven't been playing too long would really uh, benefit from the easy pack. And, and the reason that is, as opposed to taking like the advanced pack and slowing it down, is you'll find that if you took the advanced material and you put it in Riff Repeater and you slowed it all the way down, it would still be too hard for beginners. So a great example of that um, would be something like the hammer-on and pull-off exercises. So uh, for those of you who have kind of watched this evolve over the last couple months here, um, if you were to do a hammer-on exercise from the easy pack, you're literally doing that. A single hammer-on, and then a single hammer-on, and a single hammer-on. And that really just isolates one technique very slowly for your fingers. But if you compare to what we did today in the advanced pack, right. like asking a beginner to do that is, it's Cru just cruel. mean. <laughs> like, and we're, and we're, uh, honestly, we're not, we're not mean. We try not to be. We can be mean to each we, other. See, there he goes again. So the idea being, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we want to carve this out in a way that it can be useful for whatever level the person is playing at. So. You know, a beginner is going to want to be able to do that. If they can do that, then they understand the basics of hammer-ons. But, like, you know, if you've been playing a long time, you don't need to do that. That's what you yep. need to do. Right, right. <laughs> and, and so it's not necessarily applicable across so you wanna, the you, board you for play all the most players. The, it's the, the most challenging thing that you can play at 100%. Yeah, basically, is, is sort of all around the idea. It, it is carved out for different, you know, playing levels. Yeah. And, and experience levels for your instrument. Or, and like I said, if, if you're changing instruments, then you can kind of knock it down a notch from where yeah. you're comfortable playing and see if you can switch instruments and go to, you know, if you're, if you're intermediate on guitar and you're like, I want to try and play bass. Well, yeah. try the intermediate pack, but you, you may need to knock it down to the easy pack to get things like, you know, your, your finger technique in place. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Greg. Dudley? Of course. Uh, we, are, we are about done here. Uh, I just want to say that tomorrow morning uh, there will be a clue for the next week's song pack uh, in the usual place, which is on our forums. Uh, so I, I mentioned this earlier, rocksmith.com. There's a link to our forums every week, uh, well almost every week, uh, not weeks before the exercise packs. Uh, but almost every week uh, there is a clue posted. Uh, the clue is generally created by uh, RS222, one of your fellow community members, uh, creates the puzzle, we post it up, and then you solve it. And uh, when you solve it, that will give you some indication of what is coming next week. And by some indication, I mean it's usually a song title and an artist. And uh, Why don't you just give it away is. now? Okay. Well, no. <laughs> uh, uh, not confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, oh, that was, it's, it's not what you just said. Oh, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even realize that I had said that. Hashtag not confirmed. But if you want to know what is coming, uh, make sure you hit up the forums tomorrow morning. Because uh, that will would be more accurate than anything I just said. Right, Let's right. Let's just uh, put that out there. <laughs> Greg's not feeling well. <laughs> 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 um, so UB uh, Jurassic uh, will be posting that tomorrow, I believe, probably at 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, which is, what time is 7 a.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. and then U.K., who knows? Some other time. So, yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I'm really bad at remembering how many hours away we are, especially this close to the daylight savings switch over. Just remember, so it's everyone, like it's it's ten. one planet. We're all here together. Right. We are. That's that's <laughs> the thing you really have to keep in mind. Uh, but that clue will be available tomorrow morning around 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, you be Jurassic in the chat. Can correct me if I'm wrong. Please do. 
Brian, thank you. Uh, and I believe that's about it for us here today. We want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, I'm glad to be back in San Francisco, and I will see you next week. Here's one more look at Rocksmith Advanced Exercises, Volume 2. <laughs>